For those of you who are new to investing, let me start by explaining what exactly a limited liability company is. All right, so here's a, an LLC, just take its name, break it down, limited liability company. It's a business entity that protects you. And the nice thing about it is that there's two forms of protection that come from using an LLC. So let's say this is my company. You have what is called inside protection and outside protection. So I'm down here, I'm the member in this LLC. And let's say that this, pro, this LLC owns a piece of real estate. Now, if something goes wrong with that real estate and a tenant is injured, then a lawsuit is gonna be brought against a limited liability company. For example, one of our clients just recently was notified of a lawsuit that they're being sued. They live in California and they have a property in Florida. Well, the tenant on the Florida property injured themselves when they were walking up the stairs. And so they hired an attorney and now that attorney is suing this client personally because that property was in their own name. Now, if this individual had seen us before the harm occurred and they'd created a limited liability company, then that claim would not run to our, the individual investor themselves. The claim would go to the LLC. So the creditor would be forced to sue the LLC. And what that's going to do is it's going to contain that liability inside of that, that LLC. So if a judgment was entered against it for, say, $300,000 and the assets of the LLC are only $100,000, well, the most a creditor is going to get is the 100K in equity in the property. The other 200,000, they'll never collect on it. So that's one benefit. The second benefit of the LLC, uh, what, it, what it provides is that with a limited liability company, you have outside protection as well. So if I got sued personally, then that claim should stay out here and it should not impact my property uh, itself because the LLC keeps that liability outside. Now, how can an LLC be used for real estate? So this is the thing that comes up a lot. People always want to know, how am I going to put this LLC to work in my real estate investing? All real estate investors at some point in time have been confronted with whether or not they should use an LLC. And it really comes down to where you're at with your investing. Do you currently have rental property or are you considering purchasing some uh, rental real estate. So if you currently have uh, rental real estate, then what I would tell you is you should set up a limited liability company and you should place your property inside of that LLC. You're going to deed it into the LLC for that asset protection that we've been talking about. Now, if you're just getting started, you don't have any rental property yet. This is a situation then where you have to analyze, all right, how are you going to acquire that property? Are you going to pay cash or are you going to get a loan for it? If you're going to pay cash for your property, then it would make most sense then to create an LLC to take title to that property. But on the other hand, if you're going to use financing, let's say you're going to go out and work with a, a qualified mortgage lender like Wells Fargo or a broker that you know, well, then it doesn't necessarily matter. You don't need to set up that LLC right away for that property because you're not going to be able to close in the name of the LLC. So what I would recommend if you don't yet have real estate, and you're going to be financing with a traditional lender, then get the property. And once you've secured the property or what we call once your money's gone hard and you know you're gonna have that, uh, you're gonna close on that property, then set up the limited liability company and then you can move that property after closing. So you initially you close in your own name and then you've got your LLC set up over here and then you'll transfer that property into the LLC after you've closed. That's how you should consider setting these things up. So what are the benefits from using an LLC from a real estate investor standpoint? Well, it really comes down to asset protection. That is the main benefit why we should be using LLCs for our investing. And the thing you need to, I, I think you should look at is when you're setting up an LLC, a, a common mistake that I see a lot of people make with LLCs and their real estate investing is they'll think, all right, I'm going to put three or four properties into this one LLC. And in fact, I have a client right now I've been working with, they have 17 properties inside of one LLC. Now, I highly discourage you from adopting a strategy like that because if something goes wrong with one of these properties, then all of your deals inside of that one LLC are gonna be at risk. So remember my example where I said a $300,000 judgment was um, entered against the LLC, but if it only had 100K, that's all the creditor's gonna be able to collect on. Well, in this case, if there's 300,000, they'll be able to go against every single property inside of that LLC. So 
It's better to adopt a strategy, in my opinion, where you set up one LLC per property. If you watch my other videos, any of my other videos, where I'm talking about LLCs, you know I pound on this topic, that using one property per LLC is the best approach because it limits your overall risk exposure for your assets. Because, I mean, just think on this. How long do you think it took that individual to acquire 17 properties? It just didn't happen overnight. And now you're going to put all of those properties at risk for one ridiculous lawsuit? I don't think that makes financial sense to do that. And using your LLCs, what you're going to ensure if something goes wrong, the most I put at risk is just that one property. Now, are there any drawbacks to using an LLC as a real estate investor? Well, the drawbacks that I see when it comes to using an LLC are really client generated or people who set them up. If they don't know how to set them up the right way, they can create problems for themselves in, in the way they create them. For example, I see a lot of times where people will set up LLCs. Let's say it's a husband and a wife here, investor, and both of them want to own every LLC 50-50. Well, the issue that you could come up there is that I'll run into these individuals will have 10 LLCs and then they're filing 10 tax returns for because each of those LLCs have to file a return. So that's a drawback. If you're not setting them up the right way so they don't have to file tax returns, it can get quite expensive to set up the LLCs. Or I'll see clients that will have 12 limited liability companies and they have 12 separate bank accounts created because they don't understand that you can use a management entity and you can reduce the, the complexity of running your structure. So the problems that come from using LLCs are typically driven by the advisor who doesn't understand them or the individual setting them up um, because they don't realize there's different ways of creating LLCs for their real estate. So how do you set up an LLC for your real estate investing business? I'll just tell you this. You can go to Legal Doom or, or Zoom, like uh, I like to uh, refer to it, and, and, and you can set it up on your own and kind of hope that you get it right. You can go out and you can hire a professional, but ask yourself, do you know what you're doing when it comes to setting up that LLC? Does that professional know what they're doing? A lot of times people assume just because the person that they're talking to is an attorney or they're a CPA, that they understand your business. The thing that I've discovered in my own real estate investing over the past 20 years, you know, to grow a portfolio to over 300 properties, you learn a few things along the way and that it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. You have to understand the strategies that you're considering starting with and then create the structure around that. So if, so if you're wholesaling, you're flipping, Burr strategy, short-term rental, different strategies require different types of structures. So you could set up your LLC on your own, but would it be the right structure for your business? In my experience, most people don't set it up the right way because they don't understand the business. Or they'll go out there, like there's this uh, another client that I've been working with, wanted to set up a 1031 exchange. And we we're talking about buying a replacement property. And I said, well, before you go forward, let me see a copy of your operating agreement. She sent over the operating agreement and I'm looking through the operating agreement and it has the LLC name set up there, but it states that the LLC was set up in Ohio when originally, when, it, when it's actually a Wyoming limited liability company, it states that there's a different manager involved in the LLC. Somebody, I don't even know who that is and she didn't know who it was. And what I figured out by looking through the operating agreement, she grabbed a form document and just didn't do a good find and replace. And she was about to turn that over to the exchange accommodator and the lender who was helping finance the deal on the backside of this 1031. I said, hey, this could have possibly hung up your deal here and screwed up your closing because when someone looks at that document, they're going to see that you're not taking this business seriously like you should be. So I really don't think people should set up their own limited liability companies for real estate. You want to make sure that the LLC you're creating chooses the proper tax election so you're not going to be overpaying or losing out on, on some of the benefits of owning investment real estate. So, so that is a big concern uh, to keep in mind when creating an LLC. The other thing is make sure you have an operating agreement. A lot of people think all I have to do is register it with the Secretary of State, and then it's good to go. We actually need to draft an operating agreement, and that operating agreement should reflect the type of real estate activity that you're running through that business. And the other thing that I would tell you to keep in mind is that if you want to create a great asset protection structure, it starts with anonymity. I've got a lot of videos on my channel discussing anonymity with limited liability companies. And here's the thing about it. 
When your information gets put out there, if you're going to file an LLC on your own and you're going to list your information on the filing, which you have to do if you do the filing on your own, or in many states, if you're the member or manager, your name and your address will be listed there. You just lost out on one of the greatest benefits of having LLCs is that you can set them up so that your tenants and creditors, they don't even know that you have them. And so if you're thinking about setting up a limited liability company, I would strongly su suggest that you look at using an anonymity structure in your planning to create that LLC so you protect yourself from creditors and from disgruntled tenants. Hey, if you like this and you want to learn more, I want to invite you to our tax and asset protection workshop. I know you're going to have questions. And at this event, you're going to get those questions answered live by attorneys and by CPAs and tax strategists that will be on the event with me answering those questions that come up uh, during the event. So if you want to learn more about there, make sure you click on the link and you get to that event. Otherwise, I wish you the very best with your investments.